everybody, Mike D here. Welcome to the program. Today we're fishing with Gene Flukemaster Jensen in Adele, Georgia. Gene's a fellow I've known for many, many years through various fishing discussion groups on the internet, but we never fished together before. We only met a couple times in person, actually. Gene operates his own YouTube channel with fishing tips, he enjoys singing show tunes, and he loves, he absolutely adores, Christmas. Christmas is my favorite time of the year. Let's go to Lunkerville. Go on! Fish on! It seems in every town in America that there's a secret fishing spot where the water runs clear and the bass are always biting. And at that spot, there's an unsung hero who knows every stump, lay down and lily pad. Seems all he's got to do is wet a line. <laughs> And sure enough, he's reeling in a big bass. So if you're looking for real people with real fish stories, then hop a ride. We're going to Lunkerville. Brake paddle. <laughs> We're so <laughs> trouble. You know, 13 years ago, I'd have, I'd have, I'd have been worried about you driving a boat. Not <laughs> you should be worried now. Are you leaving the truck there? Yeah. Okay. We're with the Fluke Master, Gene Jensen. What's up, man? Oh, nothing much, man. Just this having is, a good this time. This is a long time coming. Yeah, we've known each other for a long time. And... I know, and but we haven't really met. We only met a couple times yep. recently. Yep, exactly. But uh, we've known each other from the Lunkerville forums. And where, where are we now? What are we doing? Um, we're actually on a place I like to come and film a lot uh, just to get away from stuff. It's called uh, Live Oak Plantation in Adel, Georgia, and uh, or Adele, Georgia, however you want to say it. But it's a it's a great little place to just come and, and uh, relax and fish. They do hunting and fishing here. Uh, they just barely started the fishing part of it, so a lot of these lakes are full of big bass. That, you know, Ooh. and they're not. It's not totally you know unfished because they've had a lot of pros here, but it's a good little place to come and, and just whack them. So it's not bad. It looks whackable. Yes. All right. Let's go. Let's do it. All right. So switch spots. Right. Here's the cat. Got a little cut here. Yeah. That seems like a place that fish might want to tuck into once in a while. Yeah. They, when there's a lot of wind blowing through, they'll stack right up on the either side of them, and you can just whack them. Really? Yeah. This this word whack is being used a lot. Ah, uh, that's just my word. Are we word. whacking them or what? I, I don't know what it is. <laughs> as cold as it is. So I spooled these up with a 20 pound braid. And what are we doing here? We're gonna tie on a fluorocarbon leader. And uh, the knot that I love to use is an FG knot. And uh, it's basically you're tying a Chinese finger trap around your fluorocarbon and it makes for a very skinny uh, knot that comes through the guides really, really well. Not easy to tie. Uh, you know, one to 10, this is a nine. It's that a means nine I'm never tired. <laughs> it's a stick with the uni to uni. But I like the idea that it has a smaller profile. Yep. Let's see how you do this. All right. 20 wraps. How many? 20. 20? And then you take and you tie a, a half hitch over around both the lines. This is where people start to mess up on this knot. You pull that hat and tie, you tie that one half hitch to start with. Then you bring your line to a slack. And then you tighten your knot, mm -hmm. and you tighten just by pulling the fluorocarbon and the braid, and you pull fairly tight, and you'll see that the knot will tighten up and almost look, start to look translucent. Mm -hmm. Then you tie crazy. another half hitch, and this is when I always get lazy. I'll leave it at the second half hitch, and eventually the knot will unravel. Well, don't get lazy here. Nope. And look how close you can cut that fluorocarbon to this knot. And then you tie two or three, maybe four more half hitches around the braid. You can do them alternating half hitches, which I, is what I like to do. And then what I do is I cut it with just a little bit of tag end showing out of that floor car or so that braid. So that's a stronger knot, stronger mm -hmm. than the uni to uni, and has a, a better profile, yep. which is harder to, to tie. Yeah, there have been people that have done break tests on it, and it be, it's beat every single knot that they've ever tried. We're calling that the fluke master knot. <laughs> no, FG knot. You can't do that. It's Who's, very, what's FG it's mean? very well known. I have no clue. Oh, okay. Fluke master gene knot. What do you got there, Gene? 
Just a little craw bait, good little flipping bait. Okay, and you got it Texas rig. Texas rig, it's very versatile, and I got a lightweight on there. And Pretty lightweight, how am I gonna fish that? You can do several things with it. Uh, we're gonna flip it around the edge of this grass, let it sink to the bottom. And this time of the year, bait gets really schooled up and they stay tight in the, into the same area and the bass will be real close to them, so. Oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> little one. Is that a Florida strain? This is a Florida strain. He's bass. a baby. Yeah. Whoa! <laughs> Lunkerville is presented by South Bend, a fishing tradition since 1906. Also sponsored by Zip Fire Starters. Give your fire some zip. Fishing Paradise 3D. Download for free at the App Store, Google Play, and Facebook. Ready to fish. Everything you need to start fishing today. You're the singing fisherman, the singing fluke master. <laughs> what kind of music do you like? I love to sing uh, uh, Broadway musicals. Wow. <laughs> sing, sing us up from Cats. No. <laughs> so what are you listening to in your truck now? What's your serious channel or your cassette tape or CD? I'm actually listening to Christmas music right now to keep me in the Christmas mood. No. <laughs> <laughs> and you you don't mind admitting it? No, uh, uh no. So you're a scout master. Yep, scout you master. You listen to Christmas music. Yep. You admit li listening to Christmas music. Oh yeah. That's very interesting. Why? So shame. why would you? You're just you love Christmas. Yep. Christmas is my favorite time of the year. Gene, tell me exactly how I should work this bait. It's pretty simple. You're just throwing it up against the grass. You let it fall down on a slack line until it hits the bottom, and then I'm doing more of a. I'm not hopping it. I'm doing more of a glide, and. Uh, the, the bottom is hard, so I don't have to worry about the bait getting buried in the silt. So I'm just pulling the rod and bringing the bait up off the bottom and letting it flutter back down. And that's just about it. And just letting it sit for about half a second before I pick it up again. And that's okay, so it you let it sit and when you pick it up and then you let it glide, are you pulling it with the rod yep, tip? Yeah, pulling it with the rod tip. Always work the bait with the rod tip. That way you feel the bites. If you work it with the reel, you, you tend to not feel the bites. So you always want to pick up the bait and move the bait with the rod. Excellent. You have like the most popular YouTube channel for fishing, right? Exactly, exactly. It's the most popular uh, instructional fishing channel. The most popular? Yep. That's amazing. Yeah, it's been a, been a lot of fun. Well, I learn a lot. I go there all the time. Well, that's awesome. <laughs> I do. I, I, I'm still learning. <laughs> that's pretty cool, man. Who needs television? <laughs> Wait, I shouldn't say that. Um, that's not good for me. <laughs> no, YouTube's a great format for your type of uh, content. Yeah, it reaches out to you, those. And it's quick, you know. Yep. You, in five minutes, you can learn how to fish a square bow crankbait or a, you know, a, a jig. You know, when I was younger, when I was starting, like, fiddling with cars, 16, 17, I needed to go to the library to get any information. Like, how do you do this? How do you change an alternator? It was really hard to get the instruction. Now, I just use the car analogy because I like working on cars. So now if I have to fix something on my car, it's always on YouTube. Like everything is on YouTube. It's the perfect venue for uh, instructional videos. I learned how to, how to insulate my house on YouTube. I mean, it was... Uh, of course you did. <laughs> it's a, everything, everything you need. There's a video for everything. Yep. It really makes life more efficient. Oh, there's, there we go. Oh, that's a good one. Nope, you came off. Oh, there we go. It's a little bit better. Ooh. The one thing about these Florida bass is they love to fight. <laughs> Look at the color on this one. Nice. Gorgeous. He's long and lean. <laughs> there you go. There we go. Small. Nice. Oh yeah. <laughs> that looks, all of them have been that size, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're on this trophy bass lake. <laughs> all right. Sing an old Christmas song for us, man. Uh, I don't know the. 
You're a trained singer. I want to hear some <laughs> Christmas songs. Come on. Is that one? Give I us one. Sing? Give us one. Make sure you see his face when he's singing. <laughs> I want th this. I want. I want to see the emotion. There is no emotion. Oh, there's emotion. emotion. I know. I could tell. I could tell you're an emotional guy. Uh, I got a feeling. <laughs> Fall on your knees. Oh, hear the angel's voices. Oh, night divine. Oh, night. Oh, holy night. That's the short version. It's beautiful, man. Time for me to catch your fish. Fish. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Airborne. <laughs> that son of a gun came out of the water a little bit. Sorry, I didn't mean to set the hook that much. <laughs> that one's smaller than the first one. Okay, hold on here. We've moved. Yes. It's the tree lake. There's trees growing <laughs> throughout this lake. What's going on <laughs> here? Oh wait, they're dead. No, they're not, not growing. They're not dead. They're are, alive. Are they, they just actually lost all their leaves? They're actually live trees. Are yeah, these are all lake? these are all pond cypress. This this mm -hmm. is a bear lake. It's one of my favorite ones to fish because it's full of really big fish. It's kind of our ace in the hole. If we're having a bad day of fishing, we come here just to catch some fish. So it's kind of I would call it a cheater lake. Hold yeah. on. <laughs> nah, he didn't, well, first of all, we're not having a bad day. We're catching fish. We well, did catch and fish. And it's just another lake on this property. Yeah. It's not. There's no cheating involved. Well, it's you know, it's one of these lakes. It's it's just beautiful. I mean, pretty mm. pretty to film. Pretty to to you know, the fish in here are really really healthy. Tons and tons of bait fish in the lake, and it's shallow, so it's a lot of fun to just come out and fish. And uh, and it shouldn't take us long to get bit. Um, with the wind blowing up against this bank, it's probably pushed the warm water up against this bank and all the way down to the other end of the lake. So we're gonna fish this dike all the way out, and we should at least catch a couple, two or three. Cool. Let's do it. All right. First cast. First cast. Right. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. Sweet. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's see where you're at. I was about 15 yeah, feet out. That coming. feels pretty good, man. He's taking me into the trees. Get out of there. Oh, man, he, he's digging under. Whoa. Uh-oh. What do I do now? Kate, stay, stay with it. Wow, this has got it. This is a real fish. Now, give him some slack a little bit. A little slack. Yep, a little bit of slack. See if he'll swim his way out. Now, pull him back. This is when you need a boat. It's a real battle. battle. It's a steep bank, so be careful. Oh, he's in there. So the objective is to keep him out of there. Yes, to let him <laughs> yep, halt just a little, enough slack to get him to pull loose and then pull him back. He may have already shook off. I'm gonna tug your line. Let me see your line real quick. Yep, he's off. Oh, that was a nice fish too. Yep. Okay, so when when you get hung in a tree like this and you and you need to break off, a lot of people will just try to cut the line and just leave the line laying around for other people to snag onto. Yeah. If you point the rod directly at your bait, grab hold of your spool and pull straight back, but turn away just in case that that hook releases and it comes straight back at your eye. It's another reason why I wear sunglasses. Is uh, you just pull back. Oh, wait, straight back. Put my glasses on. Yeah, put your glasses on and just turn back. And so when it pops loose. Mm -hmm. Oh it, yeah, you got it all. Yep. It broke got, right at the hook. It breaks right at the hook. And so the only thing stuck in that brush pile right now is that hook. Well, that's good. And you just retie. Very smart. Yep. Excellent tip, Gene. Gene's on. Look how pretty that fish is. My goodness. 
<laughs> awesome. Nice. That's a good looking fish. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I can't feel when he picks it up though. How do I manage this in the wind? Okay. So the wind's blowing this way. Yeah. You want to keep a bow, a tight bow in the in your line is what you want to yeah. do. Lifting this way does not doesn't keep a tight bow, but if you turn your body this oh, way into the wind, drag into the wind, you'll feel the bites because oh. it'll tighten up that bow and you'll feel yes, it. Yes, yes. Another great tip from the fluke master. The thinker. Why aren't we fishing flukes? Too much wind for that, I guess, too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I put some where, where did you get this name Fluke Master from? That's a inter very interesting story. Um, way back 2002, 2003, when forums were just getting started, and I had I had signed up for my very first forum, and uh, and really didn't have a name. You know, you had to make you had to make up a screen name. You know, everybody was making up a screen name. So I was in the middle of trying to learn how to fish a fluke. I had had good success on it, I had confidence in it, but I just wanted to master it. So I said, well, heck, I'll just call myself the Fluke Master as a motivational thing. And so it made me, actually, that name made me spend a whole lot of time learning the different ways you can fish a fluke. It's interesting that you say that, because for you at home that don't know what a forum is, it's also called a discussion group, and this is pre-social media, pre-Facebook. You know, before then, when you wanted to chat with other anglers and discuss stories and tips, you joined a forum. And you're the fluke master. I joined a forum to learn how to fish, and I'm, I'm Mike D. You know, I didn't say Mike Diavola. I said Mike D, and then that carried over to the show. That's why I'm Mike D. And that's why a lot of people on the show have nicknames. I like nicknaming everyone on the show. And it comes from the, the discussion group format. I don't need a nickname for you because you have one. You're the fluke master. <laughs> going to stop you for a second? Yeah. I want you to pan down to right there real slow and take a shot of that copperhead. Where? Right there. Oh yeah, right there, snake. Another thing about bank fishing people, watch where you step. Now are they poisonous? Yes. That's a copperhead. That right there? Yes. Don't, don't touch him. My stuff I didn't is right there. You. I'm going to get it. <laughs> if I got bit by that, what would we do? Uh, go to the hospital. Immediately? Immediately. Because those are really dangerous. Yeah. They, 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 you got to have some nice antivenom shots. and. One thing I learned as a kid is don't mess with them and they won't mess with you. <laughs> Additional support for Lunkerville provided by Hurricane Salt Tackle, a force to be reckoned with. Mudville Catmaster, this is not your everyday catfish gear. BassResource.com, the ultimate bass fishing resource guide. I don't like muddy fish. Oh, you got one. Nice. Sweet. Persistence. Look at that one, Mike. Pretty. Good looking. Awesome. Well, I'm not going to slide down this way. Where'd you catch that? Just right along the bank. Ah. So tell me a little bit about how you got into fishing. Wow. How I got into fishing? Yeah. Well, back in the 80s, I'm the seventh of eight children. Wow. You know, the late 70s, early 80s were the, was the recession. And so really that was the only vacation that we could afford to do. So dad would pack us up and we'd, he's a trout fisherman. He'd pack us up and we'd head up, up to North Georgia and go trout fishing for a week or two or in a, in a tent, you know, eight kids, mom and dad, or seven because my brother was in college at the time. And uh, that's all we ever did. So that's kind of how it got started. And I've always just seemed to always have done it. And it is affordable and easy. And that's why, you know, this is important right there. Under 30 bucks. Rod and reel combo, you can get them for under 20 bucks. South Bend rod, reel, line, and lures. I 
got a fish. Okay, just starting to turn on. Yep. No afternoon feed up. Here we go. <laughs> so they're a little more aggressive now. Yep. There's a fish. Oh yeah! <laughs> nice! Oh jeez! It's like popcorn bass! Here we go! Well, that's about it for today's show, folks. And the fish are turning on big time now. It seems to always happen that way. But that's okay, because a fluke master and I are going to hang out and catch fish till the sun goes down. So I want to thank Gene for taking me fishing. I want to thank Max at Live Oak Plantation for the beautiful and comfy accommodations. And thank you all at home for tuning in. Don't forget to tune in next week to Lunkerville. Lunkerville.